up until this second, the 20 mil 1.8 was the only, what the hell was that? I keep trying to catch that fly, I need chopsticks. So there's the 20 mil 1.8, there's slower zooms and stuff, like 16 to 35 Tony 4, or a G Master 2.8. Yeah, no thanks, or that monstrosity 14 mil. What the hell were they thinking? That's one mil too short. It's the weirdest thing on the wide angle. You would think one millimeter makes no difference whatsoever. It's everything. If you did like 35 mil and then 36, you wouldn't notice a difference. But for some reason, 15 is amazing. 14, you pushed it too far. It's just too wide, too distorted, it ain't right. So until now, we only had this for wide angle and ton of 1.8, 20 mil. It's like, it's wide but I've escaped my own shot. It's not wide enough, it's not ultra wide, it's not mega wide, but now, we have something wider and much heavier. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So thank you Vilchox for sending me this vlogger lens. It's surely not designed for landscape photography or any of the sorts. Let's just get the build quality out of the way. This screen, it's bright, it's annoying. For some reason, mine doesn't even work anymore. I don't know what happened. I turned the thing on, it's just a blank, bright screen. And before it was like just a lot of numbers on there. I'm like, companies just don't make the screen. Nobody, no. I'm sure some of you landscape ponies are out there just like, oh yeah, that, that elder wolf is definitely about 12 meters away from me. I'll just set you. Okay, shot. Okay, how, oh no, it's out of focus. Oh no, I don't have a camera, that's why. When it comes to build quality, I feel some hesitation on the zoom ring, the focus ring, I mean. It's a little sticky, like it doesn't just start gliding. Once you're in motion, it glides and it's smooth, but it's like a sticky start. That's what I've noticed. Clicky thing's pretty good, but it's got all the stuff a G Master lens would have, autofocus, manual focus switches, Buttons, they're clicky buttons. Cool, so it's heavy. 622 grams with no caps, but a black pro mist filter on there and the hood. Ouch, that's hefty. All right, enough of the build quality talk. Let's switch over to it. You're seeing 20 mil right now. I gotta tell you, 16 is fun. <laughs> It's just so much wider, isn't it? It's so fun. Oh, I can reach out of the shot. Ah, oh, that sucks. I tell you, it's slim pickings if you want an ultra wide and some tonne. And your only options are the 20 mil I just showed you or that 14 mil monstrosity with the bulbous lens. Oh, we can slide things in the back. Can you slide a Black Pro Mist back there? I've never seen one of those. Even if you could, just the dumbest lens ever released. If it was a 15 mil 1.8 or a 16 like the Viltrox. You might have had some sewn, but you don't. Next to me, you might have noticed that a man wearing pajamas under his clothes has manifested before us. He looks like he's a Spider-Man fan. He shoots webs in his bedroom. That's why he doesn't have a girlfriend. And he's not as wide as me. You know what I mean, ladies? <laughs> you know. He is a mistaken misfit. Sure, his lens is light. He could probably vlog with it much easier than I could, but is he wide? He's not wide enough. There's that fly again. That was not the speed needed to capture that. Are we noticing any color shifts? Because sometimes you get a third party lens and all of a sudden we have a green tint and things are off. Not the way the manufacturer designed. We gray carded I customed both lenses and then changed it in post if I needed to. We should be similar. I don't know, man. I've made a couple videos on this. I love this lens. So far, so good with a Black Pro Mist. Without it, I don't know about that. It's a little sharp. Is there 3D pop, though? I actually did a test against a couple known 3D pop lenses, and the results might shock you or not. Here's a trivia question. One of them is 3D pop-like in its abilities and the other is white trash. It's a flat obstacle similar to our flat earth. 
on the right side mouse pad. If you punch in 300 million percent, you can notice the coils of gold being appreciated more in the Canon L lens, of course, on your left. The right Viltrox is a flat mess that you couldn't even sell at a pawn shop. In this photograph, I juxtapositioned living plant life with dead stuffed animals. The pink sadness of the fluffy bird couple complements the green plant tones and the copper pot thing. It's made of plastic though. Thankfully, Canon stopped by and took a superior 3D pop image and now you know which bird is closer to the camera. The three-dimensional leaf tones are noticed by all countries. In this shot, there's pictures of masters and offerings to the masters, and it symbolizes how humankind has wanted to be generous but couldn't do it because it was thirsty. The Viltrox lens renders the scene flat and hopeless, but when we switch to the Canon lens, thankfully all is not forgotten. The Buddhas accept the gifts, and they rain happiness upon the kingdom. Okay, one of the best features of this lens, you know how Sony lenses, every single one is just focused breathing nightmares where they jump in and pounce on you and then only certain cameras get the focused breathing comp, not their best ones, of course, only the lower end. Well, Viltrox has your back, don't they? doesn't breathe. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of third-party lenses. They often have little quirks, either the color or something with the stabilization isn't right. Just the look, they rarely have 3D pop. But I will say this, I have been eyeing that G Master for a long time, the 16 to 35, but it's only a 2.8, that's the only thing holding me back. And finally, Viltrox reaches out with this thing, and it's like, really? That's perfect. So now you have like a 24 mil or the Zeiss Baddest 25 and then you have this as well for different looks in here. All right, enough of this rambling rubbish. We'll do a little vlog test first, the 20 mil, because this with active stave is quite stable if you're careful. Whereas this one, I have a feeling the active stave isn't going to work properly. Is that still the case where you think Sony's this open mount, the third party for everyone? Is that the case? And then we'll see if we can get slow-mo squirrel action, autofocus 16 mil 1.8, oh my god. Are you sufficient? Are my needs being met? Is there enough tonne and separation in a 3D pop-like manner? How's the stabilization? So we're starting actually with the 16 mil. That felt a little jerky. If I just want to walk in my neighborhood and you're distracting my audience with jerky movements, you might as well be with an X3000. I think we will compare them soon. So we got active stab on. I'm just in regular. I turned off all picture profiles. We're just in standard. Take that. I'm tired of S-Log making me dark. It's still doing it. No, there's no escaping it. No, I find most vloggers aren't as careful as I am walking. They're just like, <laughs> you know, most people grab it by the grip. You bunch of morons. You know, every step then shakes it. You're not a backwards camera freak with a hand grip in the back, pony boy. Gordon Lang's the only one that holds it with both hands and he makes it super steady. He's from South Africa, and uh, he's my favorite YouTuber in the African regions. This is his accent I'm doing now. He holds it here. His arms are 16 inches long, <laughs> and that's fine. Doesn't mean he wants to extend it out. He doesn't have to. I noticed a tulip with light glistening into its cup. The cup is holding light, and it's so magical with the touch. Is it even in focus? It probably isn't. The closest focusing distance is bullshit. Okay, I'm gonna switch to the 20 mil just so you can see the stabilization difference. You'll notice it quite heavily. So active stab and then we'll switch back for a couple tests and then some slow motion squirrel action I do believe is upon us. Oh, that is so much better. It's so much lighter. But is it more stable? 
I find obviously neither of these lenses are designed for vloggers. We just use equipment that falls on our lap. We're like, okay, I guess I could put use to that. Is that even a sentence? What are they doing? Something unvlog like? That's bullshit. But if I'm being honest with you, I think 20 mil is more than wide enough for this purpose. There's people, they have hockey sticks. Are those hockey sticks? They're not. No, uh, the... <laughs> you could play hockey with them though, right? <laughs> Apparently not. But yeah, this is still my favorite Sony vlogging lens if you had to do this. And then when you go into the shade, Sony compensates periodically. I'm not gonna lie to you, these do look like must reads. Oh, I am not gonna lie. There's Indian men running for a train. That's bound to be a good read. Sea of Tranquility. I think I've heard of that. I will read neither. So it feels like overall, uh, you're probably gonna go with the Sony 20 mil. It's lighter, maybe similarly priced, and just probably better quality. There's no 3D pop in this lens. But if you really do want that ultra wide, I think it's hard to beat that Vilti boy. Or is it? Maybe Viltrox lenses are one of the easier things in life to beat. We surely couldn't say that the Sony X3000 is a Viltrox based accessory in a dumpster vlog like fashion. It certainly couldn't be competing. I think it is. I think it wins. Welcome to Dumpster Vlogging 101. That was the X3000 on your side there and you got it wrong like usual what you think because i'm in a different location that i like forgot my sd card or something while i was out in the field come on i'm a professional i'm a vlogging professional not bad billy boy i don't mind you even at tony 11 that i had to cripple you with Is full frame really worth the weight and size bringing that hefty thing with you? For vlogging, no. <laughs> but for cinematic squirrel footage, maybe. Not with this lens in particular, but the cinema could be yours. Colors. Ow. Ow. Ah, oh, that double whammy. A fake bug bit my neck. I went to scratch it on the stupid. I just went to do like a side by side with the X3000. I was like, no memory card, huh? Oh, that's good. Glad I didn't bring one of those. Who needs those? Color by Velour. All right, let's go get some slow motion squirrel action. There's bound to be some. might be the first Viltrox lens that I don't sell to a traveling caravan of gypsies. I like them. I like the 13mm 1.4 on the Fuji. It's just it didn't have the 3D pop and uh, I don't know. It beat the Zeiss that I tested it against. Oh my god. That squirrel's back for more. The flaws of this lens are that it can't focus very close so it's not doubling as a macro lens and I do love that versatility when you do have a lens that does that. It's like, oh wow, like it's not a squirrel lens. They looked like they were 30 feet away. They were like right here. I was like, oh my God, he's this big in the shot. So it's not a slow-mo squirrel lens, but whatever. So no close focusing distance and it's heavy as hell. It's 622 grams. That should have a tripod screw underneath or something. Maybe you could vlog better with it. Cause I don't know, man. If you hold it by the lens, you're doing okay no active stape dare we end the video in that fashion some cultures have done that i'm gonna go so what do you think are you buying this lens through my affiliate links and hazelnuts
also through my affiliate links. You're not buying the nuts. Oh man, that's a 40% sale I missed. Oh, that's gonna hurt. I'll recover. You don't know that I won't. I'm gonna leave after you buy a Cameron Conspiracies t-shirt. There's a squirrel. He looks like he's 90 years away from me. 90 light years. That's how far you are. I'm gonna go. Subscribe for more videos. See you later.